All this talk about comparing the means. Now let's actually do it in R. I realized that the kids per household example wasn't the best example I could come up with. Um, first of all, it's unlikely that it'll be a normal distribution. And second of all, if you count, account in all the households without kids, the distribution would have a peak at zero. So I decided to construct a new example for us. Now, we're assigned to study the spending behavior of Disneyland visitors in 1958 and 1959. Maybe we were lucky and found two studies of consulting groups that did some surveys in 58 and 59. By the way, that data is made up. Um, what they did was they asked 60 families of four, now we're interested in families of four, um, how much they've spent during their stay at Disneyland. Well, um, the first thing you would do is to, would be to deflate the data to actually be able to compare the means. Now, let's assume you did that. Let's read in the data. So, df assignment operator read.csv parentheses quotation marks. And now you put in the path file of your raw data. I put that on my desktop. So, sorry for that slow typing, but I'm holding the microphone in my hand. I put that on my desktop. Okay, and I've called it df. Okay. Now, we've read in our data. Let's view our data. So, view, parentheses, df. Okay, now that's our data. So, this is spending 1958 and this is spending 1959. Um, the first observation, these, this is not the same family. So uh, this is just the first observation in 1958 and the first observation in 1959. So our, um, both um, samples are completely independent of each other. Um, okay, let's attach our data. Attach df. Okay, now we've attached our data. Now the first thing to check is the data itself. You've already learned some ways to do that. We could draw a histogram to look at the distribution. So we put in hist for histogram, parentheses, and then put in the variable that would be spending 1958. Okay, now this looks, looks kind of normally distributed. Okay, um, let's do the same thing for 1959. That looks okay as well. Um, another convenient way to check for normality are normal quantile quantile plots. So uh, let's do it like, so you put in QQ norm. So they're designed to check for normality. Spend, so you put in the variable 1958. Okay, and you got to put in QQ line and the same spend 1958. Okay, there you go. Now, the line represents, so the line represents how your data would look like if it would be a perfect normal distribution. The points represent your actual data. Again, you'll never encounter perfect data. This data fits our wishes, although, although there might be some skew. So let's do the same for the uh, 1959 data. So QQ norm 19, spend 1959 and QQ line 59. Okay, now um, looks good as well. Now, now that we've read in our data, we should get the mean for our variables. So put in mean, one half the mean for the spending in 1958, and one half the spending for 1959. Okay, okay, now this looks like our means are not equal, or are they? Well, we've learned not to trust the point estimates because there are only estimations. Point estimates um, plus their confidence intervals are the thing to look at. When we compare two means, the t-test is the thing to go. Um, this will compare both the means and the confidence interval. The command would be t.test, so t.test, parentheses, and then you put in the variables or the two means you want to compare. We want to compare the means of the spending in 1958 and we want to compare the spending in 1959. Okay, hit enter and okay, now this looks confusing. Let's take a look at the output. So data tells us what means we're actually comparing and now the t value or the t, the t value right here in df that is degrees of freedom. This is important to calculate the following p value. The p value is the important value for us. In nearly all the following videos and topics you will encounter the p value. The p value tells us the probability of committing a type 1 error. Remember what that meant. A type 1 error would be to reject the null hypothesis and therefore accept the alternative hypothesis while it is actually true.
Now, what is our null hypothesis in this example? Well, our null hypothesis is that there is no difference between the means. Now, you also remember our confidence interval of 95%. That would translate into a p-value threshold of 0.05, because we tolerate a type 1 error probability of under 5%. Um, now, let's take a look at our p-value right here, 0.53. Well, that's way above 0.05. Um, do we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis? Well, certainly we don't. Um, we have no evidence to reject the null hypothesis and therefore argue that there is no difference between the spending of Disneyland visitors in 1958 and 1959. Um, you see how the simple comparison between means can trigger us? So again, th this p-value, this p-value would be um, under 0.05, then we would have evidence to reject the null hypothesis. But since we, our p-value is way above 0.05, we have no evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Mm, okay, now, to make sure why that happens, let's have a look at the confidence interval of, uh, intervals of the, of the means. So, let's check the single um, variable. So, you put in t-test and then you put in just the the single variable, so 19, spending 1958, and of course the same for spending in 1959, okay? Um, the 95% confidence interval um, of 1958 spending is 17.91 to 20.93. While the 95% confidence interval for 1959 spending is between 17.63 and 20. Now, you see, our data seems to be nearly identical. And that makes sense because when I randomly created this data, I put in the same distributions parameters for both variables. Remember what the distributions parameters were? It was the mean and the standard deviation. Now that you're familiar with the p-value, and again, don't worry if you don't get it yet, I will explain that in future video videos more than once, I will show you a more formal way to test whether your data is normally distributed or not. Often, um, we can use a statistical tests to check whether assumptions for our analysis are given or not. Um, our, data, our data should be approximately a normal distribution. So a statistical test to test uh, a statistical to test this is the sharp u wilk test. You do that by the following command. You put in shapiro dot test. Open the parentheses. And then you put in the um, the single variable or the single data you want to uh, check for normality. So we got to check the spending 1958 for normality and the spending 1959. So shop test parentheses spent 1958. Okay. What it is, it gives you a p-value. It gives you a p-value right here. Um, the, the null hypothesis is that there is a normal distribution. The alternative, hypo alt alternative hypothesis is no normal distribution. Now, what does the Shapiro test tell us? Um, the the p-value of 0.06 tells us that the data is most likely normally distributed. Let's check out, let's check out our an, an 1959 data. So, the same thing just with Spain 1959. Um, again, the p-value gives us um, no evidence to reject the null hypothesis of a normally distributed data.